Hi everyone, this is our BOA live video. We'll wait for people to join. This is our first 100 day or 100 degree day, so it's getting very hot out. It's steamy hot. It's very steamy hot, so we're just enjoying it now that it's cooled off, what, three degrees? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a whopping 97 out here. Yeah. But hope everyone's enjoying their day. Had a good weekend. Enjoying quarantine. I don't know how many people we've had. We've got a couple. We've got a couple. Hello, yeah. everyone. So this live that we're doing today is going to be with our boas. And I have one of our boas here. This is Blaze. He is a rosy boa. And these guys are actually really cool. They're one of only two boa species found in North America. Uh, so we have this one and then the rubber boa, which look very similar. And these guys are found in Arizona, New Mexico, California, Mexico. This particular species or subspecies is found in California. The ones out here in Arizona are quite cool. They have like a blackish blue stripe going down them instead. Mm. But surprisingly enough, this is fully grown. So they don't get very big at all. They're one of the smaller species of boas, but they are a constrictor still. Blaze loves the <laughs> camera, as you guys can tell. Your dad and my mom say hi. Hello, guys. Hello, dad. Hello, Lori. Yes. And uh, Blaze is one of our oldest snakes that we have. He's, gosh, how old is he now? Say 15, 16? Yeah, 15, 16 years old. Yeah, he's a very old man, but he's still sprightly. And he's actually one of my favorites and they're generally the species I recommend for people who are looking into getting their first snake because they don't get very big. Um, in my opinion, they eat better than ball pythons. They're easier to take care of than ball pythons. They're slower than a corn snake. Your mom says hi. Hi, mom. Tell them about the story at the reptile show with those kids. Oh, that was awesome. Was so yes. Michael and I, we did what? How long ago? Two or three years ago? Two years ago, yeah. Two years ago, we were at the Phoenix Reptile Expo, and these uh, we had a table there with a lot of our animals. So we're showing off our animals, and Blaze was one of the snakes there, and these two young men fell in love with him, and I was just telling them how to do the setup for it, um, basically why I really like them for a snake. And then the next day, I'm walking around with my dad, and these boys run up to our table, and they're asking Michael where I am, and he's like, who are you guys? What's going on? <laughs> And then I ended up just walking up to the table at that point. So they run up to me and they're like, look at the animal we got. And it was this itty bitty little rosy boa. And they were so excited. And they're still loving that snake today. So yeah. very, very fun story. So why why else do these snakes make better pets than let's say like a bigger boa, like we're, what we're about to see? Oh yeah, we'll see bigger boas today. But <laughs> these guys make better pets in my opinion, just because they stay a lot smaller. This is full grown for a male. Um, the females don't get a lot bigger than him either. He's only about two and a half feet. Females can get around three feet, but they stay small. And even if they try to bite you, I mean, you guys saw the close-up of his face. Even if he tries to bite you, that finger, I mean, he can kind of swallow my finger and that's about it. So <laughs> it's really not going to hurt too bad. <laughs> but he is a gentleman. He has never bitten anyone. Yes, he bits me, bites me for the first time, right? No, he's never bitten anybody. No, he's he's the nicest one we got. Yeah, he's a sweet boy. I say that about a lot of our snakes. I say, oh, they're the nicest ones we have, but you never know. We told Kaz that once with one snake and uh, Kaz's Tegan's sister. And uh, Kaz, <laughs> after watching our snakes for a while, she's like, you all need to change that whole nice thing about it. So oh, yeah. We have a sticker system in our house. So when, or we had a sticker system, I should say. So when people watched our houses or our house when we were on vacation, we had like a green sticker for friendly, yellow for be careful, and red for just, you know, try not to plug them if you don't have to. <laughs> and so we had green stickers on it, and Kezia, um, yeah, she said that our system needed to be updated, so. And we did agree with her. Uh, Melissa said, fun fact, I have been bitten by a rosy boa. Ooh, oh. I didn't know that. Very did it did it leave a mark melissa that is, that is the big question or did it or a little smiley face or anything like that Wait for her reply slightly delayed yes so we'll just give him his glamour shots while we wait glamour shots awesome yeah rosy boas uh they're awesome what's really cool is their relative the rubber boa can actually be found as far north as canada 
which is amazing to think mm -hmm. that they can live in such colder climate. And they like to, well, I guess underground is a general temperature, so yeah. they like to bury themselves. Yeah, these guys are definitely one of my favorites. And then we'll show off the t-shirt again. Yes, too. please. So if you guys haven't yet, go on to SantanScreenPrinting.com. You'll get a cool pandemic survival t-shirt. <laughs> $10 uh -huh. goes to help Santan Screen Printing. $10 go to help local business. So we're on there. It's alphabetical. You go onto the site, you click the color shirt you want, and then there's a drop down to sh the business that you guys want to support. And then you get a cool t-shirt. And then, yeah, we get $10, they get $10 or whichever business you choose. Um, and we'll have that posted on our timeline as well. So if you guys want to, you can definitely help us out and help them out. And again, you get a nice t-shirt. And it is, uh, they do come in different colors, but our name is near the bottom because it's alphabetical. So R sits down right near the bottom. Yeah. Uh, Melissa did respond, I uh, bled for like five seconds. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not a very big bite at all. Their teeth are very small. And generally most snakes won't try to bite you because their teeth are very fragile. Mm -hmm. So if they bite you, a lot of the time their teeth actually break off in your skin. So most snakes actually have quite a few different defense mechanisms that they're going to do before they try to bite you. So. Yeah. Awesome. And Melissa, I'm sorry if that's not the case. Maybe you just met a mean snake. <laughs> uh, she actually said uh, it was probably her fault because uh, I was feeding them and my hand smelled like a pinky. That can happen. Most snake bites that I have occurred um, are usually during feeding time, um, yeah. especially ball pythons. Um, ball pythons tend to miss the target almost every time. <laughs> I mean, I was playing with our rats earlier, and I didn't realize that till now. But I kind of oh, felt like a rat. Yeah, I washed my hands, but still, like, as you can see, he's very calm. Maybe that's why he's like, hey, where's the food? But no. <laughs> That'll be a lot more fun when we get to play with the anaconda at the end of this video. Yeah, we'll just <laughs> play the whole thing out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go ahead and we'll put Blaze up and we'll grab our next one. If you want to chit chat with them. Yeah. Them. So if anybody has questions about Blaze, uh, go ahead and let us know in the comments. Um, going to quickly come on over to see george because every time we're with a live video george likes to come out and say hi so everybody say hi to george george is our argus monitor and then we have got floyd being a raptor with its tail all up in the air there and hissing at us and the question of the day though is is this really ten thousand volts No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> it's not 10,000 volts. Uh, thanks to Josh for grabbing that uh, sign for us. How often do you feed them? Um, our rosy boa actually was getting really fat. Uh, so we uh, started decreasing the feeding. Um, it just depends on the snake size. Our smaller snakes usually get fed once a week. Um, our medium to larger snakes get fed every twi uh, once every two weeks. Um, and then our bigger snakes will get fed every three weeks to a month, depending on what they eat. Uh, if it's a rabbit, uh, rabbits can hold them off for about a month, usually. We try not to overfeed any of our snakes. Um, main reason we don't try to feed, overfeed any of our snakes is because uh, snakes are actually really prone to fatty liver disease, which is uh, becoming a really big problem. I can grab raisin. Raisin's a little food aggressive once he's out he's pretty chill though yeah, but, I'm like the but you also played with rats yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> thanks man Alrighty, so michael is going to be getting raisin out he's our new boa that we recently got in <laughs> we'll come back over here in the shade look how beautiful it is out guys michael and i ended up getting food earlier and we were rocking out in the car or I should say I was rocking out and he was sitting there in shame, but either way. Did you answer the how often you have to feed him yeah. question? Alrighty. Alright, here's Raisin. Our lovely new guy. Raisin hey, dude. is a red tail boa. Um, however, they are not true red tail boas. There's actually several different species of, uh, or sub subspecies of red tail boas. Um, they're actually more called common boas uh, versus red tails. You can see it doesn't really have that bright of a red tail. Um, they got the common name of red tail boa, but actually they're not. Um, interesting thing about them is their scientific name is actually, uh, I believe it's constrictor constrictor, mm -hmm. um, which is absolutely For the hilarious. common boa. 
Um, so Luana asked, how can you tell your snake is hungry or is feeding more of a timed thing? Um, feeding so. is more of a timed thing. Our snakes, let's just say they're always hungry. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter if, uh, if, you know, they're, they're not wanting to eat, they'll eat something. Um, well, we put them on a schedule diet. Yeah, so in captivity, when they have food relatively available, basically they'll eat it when it's available, but they are predators. So um, in the wild, they're going to eat it whenever they can get it. And our guys, we do feed them on different schedules. So, I mean, like Michael said, they're always kind of hungry. They'll always have a feeding response, but yeah, so, they're very well fed. <laughs> uh, my mom can compliment this one if she wants to. So. Yeah, everyone says they like your shirt, or Luana says. Thank you. Um... Now, with the uh, boa constrictors, uh, boas were actually one of my first pet snakes. Um, I had a beautiful boa. Her name was Cuddles. Um, I actually have a shed of Cuddles inside, um, framed up. Um, Cuddles, I had her for, uh, man, so many years. Um, Even when we started dating, you still had her. So. Yeah, when, when me and Tegan first started dating, I had her. And um, I actually, Cuddles actually gave birth to 14 babies. Um, I was actually able to breed Cuddles. Um, I don't have any of her babies, which I'm so sad about. I should have kept at least one behind, but at the time I was still a kid and it was hard to feed so many babies. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so this here is Raisin. Um, I love boa constrictors, they're really cool. Um, the one thing that I don't like about boas that I've noticed with them is they're a little bit more head shy. Um, what that means is uh, when, if you approach their head a little too quickly, a lot of times they tend to do a false strike or an actual strike. Uh, they get very nervous up around their heads. Um, what I'm doing now is not anything huge. Um, it's generally when people reach. Yeah, like it's generally so. when people reach, they get freaked out. Um, I've seen this with the, um, with common boas. Um, I've seen this with um, actual red tails. I've seen this with Dumeril's boas. Um, so I've seen this with Brazilian rainbows. So they tend to get a little bit head shy. Um, pythons, though, I've not seen them too head shy. If a python wants to strike, it's not just do it. Um, I feel like matter. any snake can be head shy, but yeah. more popular. More. But yeah, these guys, I mean, as you can see, Raisin's a very big guy, and the yes. females will get larger than the males. He's a really big male that I've seen, but yeah. the females, they can get, honestly, we had Snuggles at one yeah. point, and she was like twice that size. Yeah. So they can get massive. and. Yeah. And these are very common pets. A lot of people tend to get boa constrictors as pets. And the main reason they get boa constrictors as pets is they are actually a cheaper snake to buy. Um, and they're also a very common snake to buy. Uh, a lot of people buy boas because uh, they've been kind of made famous, uh, especially in the 90s. They were uh, hugely made famous by people like Alice Cooper. Um, and Brittany Smithers with her albino yeah. snakes. Um, so a lot of people would tend to get these snakes um, as it just always had it. In fact, it would always be funny, like, we would go to, like, uh, one of our friend's houses and everybody would always, like, everybody had a boa constrictor. I know that was our first snake, Snakey Bob. He yeah. was a red-tailed boa, too, and uh, we ended up actually having to get rid of him because he got too big around this size and we just couldn't handle him anymore, so we rehomed him. Yeah, and that, and that can happen. Um, when the snakes get large like this, you know, the food bills go up. This one's eating some really large rats. Uh, easily could eat a rabbit. Not going to do that. I want to keep this snake nice and fit um, versus actually overfeeding it. Um, I do see a lot of boa constrictors do get overfed. Um, I've heard people feeding snakes this size once a week, a small to medium sized rabbit. That's once a week. Um, this one is digesting large rats within about a week. Um, so you should never feed a snake like that it's it's not it's not mm -hmm. good for them Lana has another good question yeah. when approaching a pet snake what is the best way to do it um so when i have people hold or pet or snakes at the show i generally <laughs> i generally keep the body like this um so as you can see i've got the head here if anything gets freaked out with this snake He's only gonna go. He's only gonna come toward me. He's not actually gonna be. I, I going. think she means more like if you have a pet one. How would you approach it if you're? It's in the cage. Just like this, you put, approach it with the tail. I tend to always get around the tail. Um, we also tend to um, tap train them. So we'll take a snake hook. Here, let's show a snake yeah. hook. <laughs> so we actually have a snake hook right here. So and you can get these in all different sizes. But say he's in his cage right now. So we generally will give him a tap with the hook just to wake him up. And then we'll come in with our hand and give him a couple taps so he knows he's not getting fed. We'll stroke him and then start picking him up slowly. Yep. And I generally always like to go around the mid-body or tail. 
Um, there's a lot of people, and you know, this was really made famous with TV shows and stuff like that, where instantly they go right for the head. If you're dealing with an aggressive snake, yeah, probably go for the head, but you're, you're also putting yourself out there. Best thing to do is get up by the tail, get them dangling. Uh, cause once they dangle, if you are dealing with an aggressive snake, uh, once they dangle, you have more access to the head, especially if you can lay it down on the ground. Yeah, especially if it comes after you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. It really just depends on the size of your snake, the attitude mm -hmm. of your snake. There's so many different factors that go into it because this is what we do for our more, like we know they're food aggressive, but we can handle them. For our ones that are a little too aggressive, we'll just go in with a snake hook until we have it out of the cage. Um, there's some that we can literally just go in and pick up. So it really kind of depends. Um, just like any cat or dog, once you get to know it, you approach it differently depending on how well you know it. So yeah. just always be careful. Use common sense. Yep. And never be hesitant. Um, that's the biggest thing I always say. Just go in and grab it. Um, don't, don't be like jumpy if you get jumpy you're getting them more food um f food motivated um because if you think about it their prey items are usually jumpy so you mm -hmm. want to go right in and oh, start sorry. touching them let me put that down yeah i mean you you're the one that taught me how to hold a snake properly or how to grab it i used to be kind of intimidated by them but mm -hmm. over the years i have learned sometimes i'll say tegan just grab it just grab it just do it just, just grab it and she, um she's a lot uh, when we first started dating, it wasn't like that. It was very hesitant, and now she's she'll go right in and she'll be like, "All right, let's do this." So and now sometimes a little yeah. too bold. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you want to climb a tree? These snakes are uh, semi-arboreal. They won't go too high up into the trees. Know. He looks like he wants to sit in a tree. They won't go too high up in the trees, but they will hang out like on a low perch, um, especially over water. Yeah. Um, they really are generally found around water. Um, helps maneuver around them, but they also hang out near water because they can ambush prey that way. Yeah. Uh, boa constrictors are ambush hunters. That means they sit and wait for their prey um, and uh, versus actually going and hunting it. Pythons can be considered ambush hunters, but are also considered uh, good hunters. They'll actually go looking for prey. Mm -hmm. And you can generally tell that by a snake's body. So as you can tell, his head's quite small. But if you go down his body, a lot of his thickness and muscle is on the back side of his tail. And that's so they can anchor themselves down. So when they strike, they have a majority of their weight behind them to keep hold of the prey. Yeah. Or make a really good belt, huh? Yeah. And Raisin um, will be in shows uh, after all this is over. Uh, we still have to do a NIDO test with Raisin. We do not know if, Nido, if Raisin's got NIDO or not. We did take a look at his trachea. His trachea is pretty clean, which is good. But you always still have to test because they could still be a carrier for it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we will be testing Raisin before we ever put Raisin into shows. Right now, Raisin's still in his quarantine period, so he doesn't get interacted with other snakes. Um, we also make sure that we're washing our hands, using different cleaning supplies and stuff like that for our quarantine animals um so it, it really just depends but uh we still have to get raisin tested once raisin's tested and we know that it's not positive for dino that's all we'll put in the show and the next snake michael will be handling he's gonna wash his hands and uh yes. he won't put it on his body so <laughs> no no <laughs> definitely not <laughs> that will not be happening that's what's <laughs> gonna go on the ground <laughs> well since um the next one's gonna be a little bit hard to handle do we want to tell them our fun and exciting news or do we want to wait till the end um so how about while i go grab this next animal and you tell them the fun and exciting news okay. and i'll put raisin here unless anybody has any more questions for raisin. yeah any other questions about sir raisin sir raisin and he is the rescue that we got from shane, shane at over at hold fast exotics the pet store in apache junction because he did get left behind by his owner but he's doing fantastic yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. Raisin, so I'll go ahead and put raisin See away raisin. and quickly sanitize myself, and then I'll bring out this next one. This next one's a little bit hard to handle. So. All right. So you want me to tell them the good news? Yeah, tell them the news. Right. We'll switch you guys around so I can actually talk to you. So our good news, <laughs> we're actually going to be doing um, virtual shows. So anyone that wants to still see our animals, whether it be schools, libraries, birthday parties, we are going to start doing virtual shows. Um, so we are going to be doing $75 for a 30 minute, which will be five animals. And then you'll get to choose to see a feeding, whether you want to see a snake being fed, a lizard being fed, or a tortoise fed. And then we will 
have an option to do like an hour long show, which will have eight animals where we bring them up to the camera, kind of like what we're doing now. And then it'll also have a feeding. If you want additional feedings, you can pay $10 to see that. Um, and then we are almost done <laughs> with our activity book. We just have a couple more pages left. So we will be able to send you a PDF of an activity book. And that has a couple different things like coloring, crosswords, um, what else do we have in there? Blank, like fill in the blank, matching. So tons of different things that you'll get to do, um, but we are going to be finishing that up hopefully this week and have our website updated. So if anyone would like a virtual show, uh, just cause obviously we're not sure when quarantine's gonna be done, we'll have that option available. So, uh, yeah, sometimes with different snakes, you can definitely be a little bit afraid of them. Copperheads and rattlesnakes. I mean, my sister, she was hiking the other day and she saw <laughs> yeah, just leave them right there. Uh, she saw a rattlesnake, so I mean as long as you're staying far enough away from them, not bugging them, you should be fine. Are you ready? I am ready. Sorry, do we, really do we want to show the blob? Alright guys, are you ready for the last one? So here's, ooh, he is a little bit stinky. Did he musk on you? No, uh, so I had to clean his water bowl, that's why I wanted to do this live today. So <laughs> soak it in a fresh poop that he had there so got to clean him out and I'm now covered in it but that's all good <clears throat> so, so who's can, this so this is James James is our easily over nine feet we don't know an exact measurement but we do know he stretches over his cage and his cage is eight feet so um, James is in green anaconda he's a male green anaconda um, generally males get about this size um, this is actually a really nice size for a male green anaconda. Um, he's super pretty. Again, pardon any poop that's on him. Uh, we've got to clean his water bowl here in a second. Um, this is James. Um, now, these snakes are from South America. They are the largest species of snake in the world. Now, by large, I do not mean long. The longest species of snake in the world is called the reticulated python. It can easily get upwards of anywhere on average 22 to 25 feet. Uh, anacondas generally don't get much larger than 15, 16 feet. Uh, there have been a couple that have gotten up into the 18 foot range. Uh, however, they do get quite thick. Um, it is said that anacondas can easily hit upwards of 300 pounds. However, currently the largest recorded, I believe is 181 pounds, I think me and Tegan looked up. Um, so it- uh, They can get very big. <laughs> they can still get extremely large. Um, now, since this is a male, he's not going to get as big as the females. Uh, this is actually a really nice size for a big male anaconda. Um, and it shouldn't get too much bigger than what you're seeing here. Now, these snakes, they are from the Amazon. They hang out, um, they hang out uh, primarily in very thick, murky water. Um, so him kind of being covered in poop doesn't really phase them. That's generally what they're in. They like to hide amongst uh, water hyacinths. And the way that you find them is you actually take a wooden stick and bare feet and you just hope that you step on one of them. <laughs> and that's generally how they attack their prey. So like we said, boas are really good at ambush hunting. Uh, these snakes will hang below the water in the hyacinth and they wait for their favorite food to come by. Their favorite food is called the capybara, which is the largest rodent in the world. And if you follow RMCCAZ at, uh, on Instagram, that's the Red Mountains Conservation Center, uh, we did a video, you can see it on YouTube. They actually have capybaras um, uh, that they breed uh, there, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So these snakes, they, they actually do like to uh, uh, hang amongst there and wait for those capybaras to come by. Now, these snakes are constricting snakes. Uh, what that means is they squeeze their prey. Um, majority of the snakes that we have are constrictors, so they all squeeze their prey. When a snake squeezes its prey, if this snake was to squeeze its prey, it would squeeze with 30 pounds per square inch of pressure. Now, Tegan, go ahead and show our cars in the background right there. Doop, doop. So those cars back there, imagine one of those being on your stomach. That's how tightly this snake can squeeze its prey. Now, when they squeeze their prey, they squeeze their prey to make their prey have a heart attack. Um, their, the amount of pressure actually makes it to where the arteries and veins can't Here. circulate blood. And because they can't circulate blood, these uh, you eventually get uh, go into cardiac arrest. This can happen in two to three minutes. Now he's stretching out for us, which is nice. You can see he stretches a good amount of our driveway. About <laughs> half the, oh, more than half the amount of our driveway. 
And you can see, I'm going to lay next to him. You can see just how large he is compared to me. He's longer <laughs> than me. <laughs> so, he's a very big guy. And if <laughs> you want to know how big he was when I first got him, James was literally only about this big. All right? So, he's a teeny, teeny little one. Um, and uh, my mom can attest to that. She saw James when he was a baby. So, these snakes, uh, they do get big. Uh, I raised them from a baby. Now, I'm using the snake stick. These snakes are extremely head shy. So if this snake feels... I think they say head sensitive. Head sensitive, that's probably a better word for it. So if this snake feels anything touch its head that's like bare skin, this snake... He likes to bite. Well, try to bite, yeah. Um, if he touches my clothes, nothing. Touches my skin. Generally he's However, I've never seen him stretch. So he will not strike me or anything like that. Um, but he will, ugh, get you away from the cactus there. Oh, but sorry. He will, he's getting very used to everything. But As I'll you can see. Go, Mr. James, go. Go, Mr. James. So these snakes, they, they can definitely get uh, a little bit head sensitive. And that's probably because about of out in the wild. How about we not put him down on the side? I'm trying not to, I'm trying to get him to go this way and away from the cactus. Do you want, here, you do his head, I'll grab his tail. Ready? Hang on. There we go. Oh, the basically bends my snake skin. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't so smart funny. that we got the little one. Yeah. Now he's probably gonna poop on me. Yeah, and these snakes uh, versus fighting, they actually prefer to musk. They, and their musk will clear out a house. That's how strong it is. <laughs> Wrangling the anaconda. And don't worry, guys. I know we said we had triple digits today, but our it's concrete is. Test the concrete. Yeah, cool. it's very cool. It's there been out of the sun for a few hours, so. There we go. Now he's just sizing you up for dinner, right? No, no. that's an I'm just kidding. <laughs> Snakes do not size up their prey for dinner. That is a total urban legend. All right, now he's calmed down. We can see how beautiful he is. So look at that pattern. I love his little side spots. They look like a little cheetah. Yep, and uh, the reason I got James is I, anacondas, you'll usually see them with two types of spots. You'll either see them with full circles or figure eights. So I can show you a figure eight. So this is a figure eight here. Um, see how the circles are combined, but if you notice individual circles going all the way down, that's what draw, drawed me to James because he had that even when he was a baby. And he just got this murky green color, which is awesome. And we actually have three anacondas at Radar Crop Tail Fun. This is James. We also have a hybrid anaconda, which is a yellow and green hybrid mix. And then we have a baby green anaconda that's a female, so she's going to get much bigger. Yes, yeah, she is. All right, good job, James. Does anybody have any questions about James? Go ahead and just put them in the comments. James likes to eat rabbits? Well, he likes to eat lots of things. He'll, he'll eat rabbits, eat rats, anything. guinea pigs. Yeah, he'll eat anything. Kind of cool to see him move here. You can see how he's moving. He's keeping his front end straight, using his back end to kind of push himself. And they have bottom scales underneath called scutes that allow them to maneuver themselves and kind of grip to the ground. Now these snakes are mainly in water because of how heavy they are. They can move a lot faster in the water versus on land. And they're actually kind of cool. They're some of the only snakes that have the nostrils on top of their head instead of the very front of their face. Yes. I would come in for a close-up, but I don't know if he's going to be wanting that. Oh, why not? <laughs> hey, James. Can I see your face, dude? Yeah. There we go. Some poop on the nose there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, we gotta clean his water bowl. He spends most of his time in his water bowl, but. Oh, so that's a great question. How does something that strong not break out of its home habitat? Well, uh. <laughs> so, um, one, he's got very thick glass. He's tried to break out before, but he hasn't done it. Um, they're usually pretty content with themselves, um, but most reptile enclosures are built so you don't get broke, uh, you don't have the uh, animals breaking out. Ours are sliding glass. Sliding glass do a lot better for snakes than the top lids. The top lids, unless you have some strong hooks, they will push themselves right out. Sliding glass, they have to put themselves. But if you put locks on the sliding glass doors, definitely can't get out. Yeah, we had that issue with George. He'd like to try to open his cage a lot, so we'd have to lock his. But uh, James, actually, he his one is um, a little bit older, so the glass is actually quite difficult even for us to open. <laughs> so he's very well sitting in there here. You want to give me the snake hook so you can get his water bowl out? Ah, uh, yeah. Here you go. 
Thanks, man. Hey, bud. You just let him sit here. You're good. He's just periscoping, hanging out. So let's get you back out here. Do you need help? I'm gonna have to All right. As you can tell, he has a very big water bowl, which is very, very heavy, so. Yeah, I'm gonna have to vacuum it when we get done. We'll put him in a tub. Oh. Did you want a, a tub for him? Um, I'm gonna have to clean out a tub first, so this probably wasn't the best idea. Although I might put him in his enclosure and just do it while he's in the enclosure. Have him go if on I the other side. If I take him away from the water bowl, you won't go back and do it. Probably just go hide. This is James, everyone. We did used to take him to shows when he was a bit smaller. Now we have to do shows together with him. So Michael can be on the head. I can be on the tail. Um, <laughs> as you guys have seen, he's very fast. He's very powerful. So he's more than likely gonna, you know, if we ever get a shot, be a display animal. Yeah, it'll be a great display animal. Um, we have done some display shows with him and he's gone to bigger events before. But like he said, Kind of me and taking out to be there. I have taken him to some birthday parties uh, recently, uh, but even he's now he's got to kind of come in his own box. Um, he's he's a little bit big to me too. So yeah, and yes, we keep him his full life. He shouldn't get a, extremely bigger than what you're seeing here. This is a really nice size male anaconda. Um, we're trying to get him hooked up with some females because um, he is he's he, ready to have he's ready to be a dad. He's definitely ready to be a dad. <laughs> it numerous times so if anybody's watching has got a nice big female that you want to pair up we have a stud here yeah All the cars are gonna have to stop and be like what why is there an anaconda in your driveway on the road and yes our neighbors do know we own anacondas <laughs> yeah okay. yeah and frankie won't be big enough to breed for probably like 10 years <laughs> She's gonna, it's gonna take her a while to get big enough, so. Yeah, we're not gonna power feed her either. Slow grow. And anacondas are tricky, so hell of a wild. Um, it's usually not just one male to a female, it's actually multiple males to a female, so you kinda have to put many males in with the female. If you look up breeding ball on YouTube, garter snakes and anacondas, they'll do breeding balls, so yep. most of the time you need multiple males to I mean, you can do it with one male, but it's pretty rare. Sometimes so, it's better to have two or three. A trick that some people have used are using snake skins from other male anacondas. Um, that generally tends Aww. to help it out. Thanks for all the love, guys. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to get James put away. He's kind of getting a bit too much to handle, but uh, let me just <laughs> quickly go over. Yeah. Someone asked, well, you can put him away if you want. Do you need help putting him away? or? Uh, you got him? You sure you don't want me to get his tail? No, I, I should be able to get him. Okay, I'll come back over here. What was somebody saying? Uh, someone was just asking, how many snakes do you have? Uh, what did we count the other day over... Or we counted reptiles. Yeah, day. well, no, animals all together, we have over 70. Um, snakes, let's see, we have one, two, three, Too four. <laughs> I, yeah, I can keep counting. We'll do a tally later, but I think it was about 40 snakes around there. Um, and then my dad says, do yellow and greens share the same habitat in the wild? They actually don't. So they are found in different areas. Um, there's some species that do kind of cross paths, uh, but generally they're in their own, their own area. Now we see him trying to get him back in. Um, but yeah, and there's, I mean, as we had said, we have a sub or a hybrid between a green and a yellow that was done in a zoo. So, um, they don't generally breed in the wild like that. That was a whoops litter. And has one of your reptiles ever escaped in your house? <laughs> um, Do you want to tell them the story about the great anaconda escaping? That was in our house. That Do you want to come over house. here? So, Ooh, here, we have it this way now. Oh, so, we can bad. actually talk to them. Oh, nice. Um, so, there was one day where I had some shows on the west side of Phoenix. We live on the east side. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot easier for me to go spend the night at my mom's house. So I packed the snakes in some tubs. And uh, one of them was James the Anaconda. And I was also uh, babysitting my mom's house while she was out. House sitting. House sitting, yeah. And uh, so 
as we're as we're at the house, I go get ready to go to this show, and the anaconda is not in its tub, and I'm like, oh no. Wait, didn't you get to the show and it wasn't there? No, 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 that was that was another one. Yeah, another animal. Um, so the animal, uh, so uh, it's out in my mom's house somewhere. I was beyond freaked out because my mom's got yeah, cats. Yeah, Linda, that's what we're talking about. Um, so what we did uh, is. Um, I, I cleared off one room and there was one room only that I could clear out and I cleared it out to make sure that the snake wasn't there. And once I knew that that room was completely clear, I put the cats in that in the dog in that room and I said, okay, you guys are staying there. And I looked everywhere for this snake. I tore apart the house. I did everything. And uh, at night, what I did was I put sugar and I put it in lines uh, going around each different room and separating the hallway out. So if the snake went over the sugar, I would see the sugar trails um, everywhere and uh, I didn't um, there so was no sugar trail there was no sugar trail so I'm we like thought he went is down the toilet. Sitting. yeah we thought he went down the toilet because they he like water for three days yeah yeah he was gone for three days and finally my mom comes home we're, we're searching through everything and uh, so as we're looking for this snake I was like you know there's one thing I haven't checked yet just because I don't think he can fit in there and now it's under the dishwasher so I opened up the bottom of the dishwasher and sure enough, there he is. He's sitting right underneath the dishwasher that you saw how big he is. He squeezed through a hole about that big yeah. to get under the dishwasher. So they can make themselves super flat and super flexible. And he squeezed himself into this tiny hole. And so I fed him out of the dishwasher and he was perfectly fine. But man, he led me on quite a ride. Yeah. So well, we've had multiple escapes. George has gone out and had fun with our neighbors. Uh, we've had when we still lived in apartments with some of these reptiles, we've had multiple animals get out. We've woken up with snakes in our bed because someone has a hard time closing cages. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> it's happened. That would have to be a story time. We should make a YouTube video of all the times. Uh, we should bring my mom onto that because my yeah, mom has starring. got probably the best stories of snakes escaping when I was young. So <laughs> tanks and cages are so much better nowadays. Back in the day, it used to be just aquariums that you put this rinky dink lid on. Yeah. And we don't have those anymore. Now it's like locking keys. It's but your mom's sliding found glass. Like his mom has taken like binders to school and there's a snake in there, right? That's one. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. then in her car. Yep. Like, oh yeah, we need a guest star. When your mom, yeah. she's moving back to Arizona, yeah. we'll guest star. Yeah, when she Story comes time. back, we'll have to do this. It, <laughs> yeah. it is funny. So yeah. there's tons of stories about that. I'm sure you have some when you were a kid. About animals escaping? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's got to be at least Oh, one. Some of those stories don't end very well though. I know a tarantula one that Tegan's got. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. Um, the vacuum. Oh no, I've heard. Yeah. That's uh, what your mom said. <laughs> My husband is in tears laughing at this story. It was, it was hilarious. It was yeah, we got a lot of one them. of the best ones. We do have a lot of them. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, sweet. So, everybody, I think we got most of our questions done. We're going to go mm -hmm. ahead and end this video. You can check this video out on YouTube. I don't know if we posted the Python video yet. but We'll post it. We'll post it. Um, so, again, uh, check out Tegan's shirt really quick. Uh, AZ Strong. Get yourself a nice commemorative T-shirt. They're $20. You can get them on azstrong.com. Yeah, or no, it's a... Uh, it's nice. We'll, we'll link it we'll link on it. our Facebook. Um, and uh, so you can get a t-shirt. $10 goes to us if you select Radical Reptile Fund. $10 goes toward uh, the t-shirt business itself. Santan um, screen printing. Santan screen printing. There you go. Uh, so make sure to get one. Um, also, we are doing virtual shows starting Monday. So Monday, if you want to book oh. a virtual show, well... Next Monday. Next Monday, yeah, because yeah. we still got to do the activity book. We're getting there. Um... But uh, starting next Monday, or uh, you get a, uh, we'll send you a snake skin so you can feel what a snake feels like. Five animals for seventy-five dollars, uh, and that includes one feeding of your choice, whether it's tortoises, lizards, or a snake. Really cool opportunity. Um, or for eight animals in one feeding, it is a hundred dollars. Um, so feel free to sign up for some virtual stuff. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I've already done a couple virtual shows as testers, and everybody has loved them. Um, we even have some pictures that we'll post when we post it up on our Facebook. So yeah. uh, it's it's definitely been exciting. Alrighty, well, love you guys. Thank you all for joining us, and yeah, check out our YouTube, Instagram. Oh, our cat Taco. She now has an Instagram. Oh, Go yes. check her out, Taco the Queen. Yeah, check out. Taco. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Have a good day. Bye.